Hello, everyone, and welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis, and with me, as always, is June Liu. How are you doing, June? Good. I had uh, two double IPAs. <laughs> now, let, my, my let's let just people know you're not you weren't doing it just to be drunk. You were doing it for um, oh no, no the yeah, Margo show. Uh, I mean, <laughs> classic Thursday night, you know, whatever. <laughs> Uh, but no, it, it was for uh, one embargo with uh, Seth at, at a cigar federation. So yeah, but now I feel bloated as shit drinking those double IPAs. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, so we... yeah, today we are uh, doing the review recap of the uh, Cavalier Geneva White Series uh, Diplomat, and uh, this is a cigar from a brand new company that just launched at IPCPR 2016. Uh, cigar is uh, basically a double robusto, um, or pretty much as close as you can classify it to that. It's five and a half inches, uh, fifty-six ring gauge. Um, comes out of the San Judas Tadeo uh, factory in Honduras. Uh, the wrapper is Habano. The binder is Connecticut, and the filler is uh, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, and Paraguay. Um, the blenders on this is uh, Sebastian uh, Dicope. I think I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. He'll, he'll correct me if I'm wrong, I guess. And uh, Aiden Perez. Um, cigar's price point is $10. Uh, just released uh, this month in August 2016. Um, so like I said, brand new company. Uh, we just ran across them, didn't know about them really before that. Um, so um, uh, a brand new cigar that we get a, a chance to take a look at. So... Uh, let's get into the pre-light experience. June, what was your pre-light experience with the cigar? Um, um, so first, you know, thing that everybody notices about the cigar is that piece of gold leaf on the wrapper. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I was talking to, uh, Sebastian, I think when we were at IPCPR and I said, Hey, are we recommended to smoke through this thing? Uh, he's like, yeah, uh, you're supposed to smoke through it and, and supposedly gold burns, at a higher temperature. So, so in other words, I, I think what he meant by that was, or the way I heard it was, uh, it's supposed to burn through just fine. Mm -hmm. um, so within that gold leaf uh, with the band that's like white and gold, um, it was it was very classy looking. It was very uh, uh, luxurious looking. Mm -hmm. um, so getting to the actual cigar itself, um, I thought the cigar wrapper was really gorgeous. It had this like almost like this Colorado red like Habano wrapper to it. Uh, if you hold it up against the sign, you could really see some of that oil content and see some of that more of that reddish uh, uh, hue to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so very attractive. Um, veins it was for the most part uh, pretty well pressed, except that I had like probably like a couple of inches worth that was protruding out, um, and it wasn't as pressed well mm -hmm. uh seems fairly tight throughout the entire cigar um and the cigar felt pretty well bunched and rolled um i didn't feel any soft spots uh, it had a uniform give to the entire cigar um the cap had a uh a, a, like a like a semi pigtail ish flare to it um and then uh, it, the, the cap was interesting because it didn't have that traditional, uh, that Cuban style of a uh, triple cap. But uh, for my version, it had a very thick double cap on it. Mm. Uh, getting into the pre-light aromas, on the wrapper, got a lot of fresh barnyard, uh, sharp cedar. Uh, and I got this like funky soapy taste to it, uh, smell to it rather, uh, which I typically don't get. Um, foot aroma, got a lot of sweet hay, uh, white pepper, and, and that same sharp cedar. Uh, the cold draw I got, you know, it's just stereotypical of what I always get of that dry cardboard. Um, I had like a fine sandpaper, like like min like a grittiness to it as well. Uh, and then I got a little bit of a, a pepper zing um, on my lips. Mm -hmm. But all in all, um, very good presentation. Yeah, I thought this car had a nice uh, medium brown leather colored wrapper. Um, there were a few medium-sized veins, and they those veins had a, a lighter color than the rest of the wrapper. Um, and the seams were, were smooth, but they were easily visible. Uh, what what I thought I saw was just a single cap, um, but what you said is correct. It's like um, it was very long, so it went far yeah. down the shoulder, uh, went all the way to the top. Um, the the end was twisted, um, but there was no you know flag or tail to it. It was just kind of twisted and then broken off. Um, yeah. 
but it, it looked it was very nicely applied um for a, you know for a single cap it didn't look cheap or anything like that um and then the band is very simple uh all white with um gold oval with a um, uh, a guy leading a horse and that's all in gold as well um but like you talked about i think the big thing that everybody notices about this cigar is that gold leaf diamond that's on the that's on the wrapper um kind of adds a, a little additional piece of flair to it and that kind of uh flakes off a little bit as you're um handling the cigar or smoking the cigar and that I, that's to be expected um but um you know just something to be aware of, you know, if you smoke the cigar at the shop or whatever it is, and then, you know, you go home and you see the wife, she might see like, you know, gold glitter on your clothes and she might think you're at the strip club or something like that. So just <laughs> so, something to keep in mind when you're, when you're smoking the cigar. Um, diamond is about one inch in size. Um, so it's not huge, but I mean, just something that you, that you notice. Um, the aroma from the wrapper, um, it was a distinct leather and I also got a little bit of barnyard there. And then the foot aroma was also leather, but um, it was a little lighter, and there was also a little faint tobacco sweetness there. Uh, Pre-laid draw uh, gave me like a slight uh, fruit sweetness, and then more of that same leather that was present in the aroma. Um, and I also got that um, slightly spicy uh, tingle on my lips from the from the pre-laid draw. So getting into the flavor, first third through final third, kind of take us through your uh, progression there. Yep. Um, so th this in general was an incredibly easy going and, and smooth uh, spoken experience. Um, so right out of the gate, my palate just got a ton of this breadiness and this nougat kind of a flavor. Um, and that breadiness, breadiness uh, within the, most of the cigar, uh, minus kind of like the last third, it tasted like uh, – the best way I could describe it is if you get something that's like a really eggy custardy pastry, mm -hmm. um, it tasted like that, 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 that's sweetened and, and it's got the buttery uh, nuts and it's got the cream and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I tasted that throughout most of the cigar, absolutely delicious note. Um, so following those notes, uh, I got some sweet hay, uh, some meaty body sweet cream and some faint cedar. Um, and what I thought was really unique was, for the most part, the entire cigar didn't really have much spice on the uh, through the mouth taste, um, and and you tasted some of that through only through retrohaling, um, and I wish that there was more spice that's a company to get it to give it more of that uh, that fullness. Um, so uh, on the retrohale, uh, faint charred wood. I got some slight wood bitterness um, and some sweet cream. Uh, the finish just lingered with that same custardy pastry note. Um, and faint cedar and bitterness. Um, and when I say bitterness in the cigar, uh, it's, it's all a good thing. It, it, it rounds out the cigar um, in a good way. So uh, so about two inches in, uh, the profile, uh, the cedar wood bitterness and that sweet hay uh, move more of an upfront, but you still taste that custardy pastry. Um, and within the entire cigar in terms of body and strength, uh, body medium, uh, strength was, you know, medium minus to almost minus. Um, I, I absolutely got zero nicotine effect on it. Um, and knowing how sensitive I am to nicotine, if I don't get much of it, most people probably just think that they're just smoking a big good. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so going through the second third, um, it, it, it started off where how the first third left off. Uh, still very smooth and, and easygoing notes of uh, that buttery egg pastry, sweet hay, cedar, uh, slight charred wood, and some faint wood bitterness. Um, so about about an inch into the second third, um, I got some new notes that entered into the profile, a really great note of uh, overripe plums, uh, or just the overripe stone fruit in general, something that's really jammy. Um, coffee and cream and at certain pockets I tasted like a really refreshing mintiness to it mm -hmm. so very unique um, very good uh, very distinguishable uh, easily distinguishable notes of those uh, retro hell uh, buttery egg pastry slight white pepper uh, that white pepper on the retro started to kind of uh, pop a little bit more as compared to the first third which is a good thing um, and the finish was uh, slight wood bitterness uh, sweet cream um, so all in all, second third was by far, uh, my favorite part of the cigar and getting into the last third. So the last third is interesting and I'm interested to see what your thoughts on this is when you, when, when you start talking about the flavors, 
So the last three is where you kind of get into that gold leaf part. Mm-hmm. I felt like when I was smoking through that, I tasted this like slick metallic note to it. Mm. And I thought to my head, am I, is it because I'm visually looking at this gold leaf or gold? I don't know what, if it's real, what kind of gold it is, but is it because I'm looking at this gold thing burning? Right. It's associated to like a tinny, like metallic note to it. But I smoked through it. But, uh, and, and then when I smoked through the actual gold leaf, um, that metallic note dissipated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I started getting uh, fake charred wood, wood bitterness, sweet cream, sweet hay, and bread. So pretty much uh, same notes-ish uh, as compared to the uh, first and second third. Um, and that retro is still that white pepper spice that's a little bit more dominant, uh, sweet medium body cream. And the cedar uh, became sharper at that point. Um, the finish, uh, consisting of, uh, that same faint charred wood, wood bitterness, uh, and I got a little bit of dry nuttiness to it as well. Um, but, um, but that, that metallic note was just, it was funky. Um, I I didn't like it, but luckily it was, uh, the other flavors after that gold leaf was, uh, was pretty good. What about you? Yeah, for me, the initial draws gave me like a very toasted um, oak flavor. And then uh, I guess an eighth of an inch in or so, uh, that toastiness mellowed out. And it was just kind of a, a slightly toasted oak. Um, quarter inch in, a little bit of mustiness joined the profile. And uh, the retro hail is primarily just uh, straight oak. And then uh, half inch in, uh, a vegetal note joined in uh, and mixed in with the lightly toasted oak and the mustiness. And then nearing the inch mark, um, the primary flavors. Um, just remained as the oak and the mustiness. Um, there was a little bit of a vegetal note on the finish, um, and but the retro hill was um, primarily oak, um, but it also had a little bit of that vegetal uh, note on the finish as well. Um, near the end of the third, uh, there were notes of cedar that were kind of popping in and out uh, on kind of like alternating draws. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, and then the strength for me was like slightly below uh, medium there in that... Uh, in that first third, um, getting into the second third, uh, flavors mellowed out, mellowed out a bit, uh, but the the mix um, of those flavors uh, became better. Um, the oak mustiness, a little bit of cedar, still a little bit of the vegetal note. Uh, a quarter inch in, um, a little bit of pepper joined into the profile, and then a few more draws in, um, the pepper and the vegetal note kind of went away, and the profile became um, creamy, um, along with that uh, oak and mustiness. Uh, half an inch in, the creaminess subsided, and it went back to the oak and mustiness. And then a little further in, uh, some of the cedar came back to mix in with uh, the oak and the mustiness. <clears throat> uh, an inch and a quarter in, um, I was getting a flavor I don't think I've ever gotten in a cigar before, and that was peanut. Hmm. I know people are going to think, all right, this guy's nuts to get in, you know, peanut. I said egg cuskers, so they're probably like, oh, so. yeah, so we're getting into some crazy profiles now. So, um, it was more on the finish, um, and on the retro hail, but it was there. Like I, I, it was distinct enough for me to notice it and pick out that flavor. I wasn't just trying to, you know, pull, pull something out of a hat there. Um, and then near the end of the third, um, some char came in to, to mix with the oak. Um, but the peanut and the must mustiness, um, had gone away, uh, right there at the end, uh, get into the final third. Uh, the profile lightened up a bit, uh, the char toned down some, um, and I began to get a fair about a, amount of bitterness there. So what I did was I did a flaming purge, um, and I got a pretty neat flame coming off the end of this cigar, you know, uh, you know, kind of, um, blue, purple, pink, you know, all those, you know, nice looking colors and things like that. And it, it lasted for quite a while. As long as I was pushing air through it, it was, it was going on and then it kind of uh, faded out for me. Um, but after the purge and I let it, um, less rest for a little bit, um, the profile really settled down. Um, it was mild cedar. There was still a little bit of bitterness in the background and then uh, half an inch in the bitterness went away. And then the profile was then like light woodiness. Um, and that also kind of carried over to the retro hail. Uh, a little further in, uh, some of the mustiness became present on the retro hail along with the wood. And then uh, near the end of the cigar, uh, the mustiness kind of made its way into the mouth profile. So it was really musty wood in the mouth and on the retro hail. And then the strength in that final third was uh, just below medium as well. So getting into performance, burn and draw, what was your experience like? 
um, the burn, the first two thirds uh, was really good burn. Sturdy ashes uh, had, you know, chunk, you know, really solid chunks of one and a half inch ash marks, razor sharp burn. But at the last third, uh, the burn line was noticeably wavy. Um, mm -hmm. So probably kind of deviated probably a good like half an inch or so. But uh, but I never had to use my lighter to touch up or, or relight. So, mm -hmm. so that was good. Um, I got 173 minutes out of smoking this thing, which was pretty darn good. And it burned cool the entire way through. Um, right. So very good burn. Uh, draw was absolutely on point. Um, it had just the amount of perfect resistance um, to let me know that I'm drawing on a cigar. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it, you know, it did everything to let me taste all the notes of the cigar. Yeah, the uh, burn for me was good. Uh, in the middle third, there was a section of the wrapper on the side that was opposite of that um, diamond um, that didn't want to burn. Um, I didn't touch it up, though. I mean, this, the rest of the cigar was burning, and it was burning like right underneath that, that wrapper section, so it wasn't like the whole side of the cigar wasn't burning. So after the ash dropped kind of when um, where that section was, um, all that was really left was that little piece of wrapper so i was able to just kind of like flick it off on the side of the ashtray and it was it was gone i didn't need to to go and, and touch it up at all and um the ash held on for you know just a little over um one inch segments now the draws where the cigar failed me very tight um after my initial cut i did the pre-light draw it was really tight so i cut it again but it was still really tight i lit it up Took a few draws, just trying to see if, you know, sometimes when you, once you put uh, flame to the cigar, you get a very different draw, but I, that wasn't it with this. Um, so I took the draw tool to it, and, you know, I, I probably went through it, like, in, like, five or six different spots around just trying to get it. And I I could feel myself hitting some hitting things in there, and I was pushing through those. Uh -huh. But even then, it still didn't still didn't do it and as the cigar went along i went back and i you know i went down the same slots and then i tried to make find some new spots to do it and it still didn't really um help much um it loosened up a little bit in the final third but you know it wasn't anything significant um but i think the tight draw is actually what presented some of the flavors i got like the char that i was getting at the um the end of the second third and then that bitterness that i was getting in the final third i think that was all um kind of resulting from me having to pull fairly hard on the cigar. So maybe I got things heated up a little bit and, and things kind of um, came up that way. So, um, you know, I I wish I had your experience with the draw because I think the flavors would have been um, even better. Um, but, you know, what the experience you had shows that, it, you know, it may not be something that's, that's really prevalent in the cigar. So, and, and I remember smoking one of these at the show. Uh, and, and, and I didn't have any construction issues at all. Okay. Yeah, maybe I just got that one. You know, I just got that one that had a tight draw. So I, I have another one. So I'll, I'll light that up and, and give it a shot. And if I don't have that, I, I expect a, um, you know, even a bit, an even better experience than what I had with this one. Yeah. So overall, what were your thoughts on the cigar? Hey, first of all, you know, going back to the whole smoking through the gold leaf part. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to mention something about it. Go ahead. Did you, did you taste any? like weirdness i thought i did like on like on one draw but you know i don't know if that was like you said i don't know if that was just kind of me thinking about it but it was just maybe like one one or two draws and then it wasn't uh, a big deal at all for me hmm. but one thing to note is that <clears throat> um as the cigar is burning through it the gold doesn't really all burn off so it kind of like just lays on top of the ash right so once you you know when the ash is there you could still see um kind of the outline of that of that diamond and the, you know, you still see a little bit of the gold there. So it doesn't actually completely burn away. It's, it's still, still there a little bit. Yeah. And, and I took a picture of that on the last third, uh, on the one I spoke. Yeah. So, you know, you guys could see that when, when, when it comes. Yep. Um, but dude, I swear, I, I was like, I think my mind was playing tricks on me or I was really, <laughs> but I'm going to go with, I truly tasted it. Cause I tasted it throughout the entire gold part. Right. Right. Anyways, overall, um, so if I remember correctly, uh, Sebastian created this uh, to namely originally hit the European market, correct? Mm -hmm. And now that he's coming it out, uh, coming out with it uh, in the U.S., so I can see why uh, this will fit a lot of European profile. Uh, so meaning, something that's not very strong, uh, a very mild street cigar. 
that has a lot of uh, sweetness, creaminess, uh, you know, kind of like that buttery richness to it. Um, in, in other words, you know, I feel like whenever I smoke something like this, that was originally a European exclusive, especially, or an Asia Pacific exclusive. They're, they're basically trying to use non-Cuban tobaccos to taste like a Cuban cigar. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like this is one of those examples. I feel like given the fact that, you know, I'm glad that Sebastian and company are releasing this in the U.S., uh, especially knowing that the recent wave of the last couple of years of uh, uh, Connecticut shade wrappers and, and just milder versions of cigars coming out and, and really playing in that market. Um, I think it could contend well in that market. Mm-hmm. Um, but knowing that most U.S. smokers are uh, heavier strength cigar guys, uh, I'm not sure how, how well it'll do. Um, I certainly enjoy it because I, I'm, I'm more of a mild guy anyways. Um, but you know, it was a, it was a really easy going, you know, dessert like cigar for me. Um, it's for being 10 bucks, especially knowing that, like for instance, earlier today, I smoked a, uh, H. Upman, uh, Connoisseur A and, and that's like a, essentially like a Toro size cigar and that's a $12 cigar and, and, and and this being a ten dollars cigar, I mean that cigar had way much more complexities and body and everything along to it, um, where this kind of pales in comparison. Mm-hmm. But if I were to reflect on, let's just say, milder cigars that's in the U.S., uh, namely Ecuador, Connecticut, U.S. Connecticut shade, um, this is unique enough that it could work and, and compete with those other guys, mm-hmm. uh, the underground shades, the. Um, just give you my mind, like some of the hammer sickle lighter stuff. Um, right. So I, I enjoyed it, um, but ten bucks feels a little steep for something like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I mean, even with the draw issues, I thought the cigar was still pretty good. Um, I think that without those issues, it would be a better experience. And like, like you stated, you know, you didn't have those issues, and um, the flavors that you were describing are things that are right up my alley. So, um, you know, I'm definitely gonna smoke another one. Um, to see what that experience is like with uh, a little bit of construction on it. Um, I think it's definitely easily approachable from any, for any level of cigar smoker. Uh, strength level is right around the medium range. Uh, flavors are pretty mellow. Um, it's not going to knock you down or anything like that. So um, I'd say pick one up, see what you think, see if it fits your profile. Um, you know, $10 isn't going to kill you. Uh, but it gives you a chance to try it and see what you think, and then you can decide if you want to go a little deeper on those. Um, but I think better construction, I think this could actually be a, a, a really good cigar. Um, so we'll just have to kind of see how, um, others kind of, uh, report on it, um, as people get to smoke it and, and kind of get, get what their thoughts are. So, so let's get into the scores. Uh, you gave this a 7.20. I gave it a 6.27. How do you think your score, uh, related to your experience? Wow. That's pretty high. Uh, but it was a tasty cigar. I mean, this is something that I pick up when I'm sick of smoking Ecuador, Connecticut. Right. I'll happily smoke this in lieu of those. Um, so, uh, and I will buy some of these too. I mean, I think it's different enough and it's unique enough that it warrants some purchasing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so given that, and just the fact that I just enjoy most of it minus that weird gold part, uh, and I'm going to smoke a few more samples of it just to gauge that again. Uh, but, I, yeah, it's good. It's it's high. Uh, the construction helped it. Uh, mine was a very good constructive cigar. Mm. So, so that bumped it up. And, um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think my score is match as well. I mean, uh, the flavors I got, uh, you know, f- for the first cigar were very good. Um, I just think, some, I think that draw issue just um, – kind of created a, a different experience there at the kind of the end of the second third beginning of the final third. Um, so, you know, I, I could definitely see this getting up into the sevens for me, um, you know, smoking another sample that, that doesn't have that draw issue. Um, so I think it fits well. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to smoking um, some more of these. Um, so, I mean, I think that's a, you know, a, a good indication. It's not like I'm kind of giving up on it uh, just based on the, the one I smoked for the review here, but um, yeah, I think it's good. Um, you know, new, new brand, 
Um, they also have another um, cigar coming out later this year uh, or maybe next year called the Black Series. So that's another one that we'll get a chance to smoke. Um, but yeah, we, I, think we, I think it's a good um, – go ahead. Did we get those? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I think it's a good cigar. Uh, and definitely uh, I think a good offering for their first one to the U.S., so it's, I think, something that they have a, a good start with. So, Any final thoughts from you, Jim? Uh, this might be the uh, underrated, under-the-radar cigar contender for me for the year, actually. Yeah. 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 Not that there's that many out there. But. Still early, but we, there's, you know, there's a couple others that we have on, you know, on our review list that we'll get a chance to check out, and then we'll be able to kind of yeah. determine for us which one that is or which ones those are. So. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching. If you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us, but also go to the website, developingpilots.com, to check out the full written review. And uh, be sure to follow us on all the social media channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will catch you on the next video.